Hey folks, do you love paying the carbon tax? Probably not, because it costs you an arm and a leg every time you're filling up. So if you're filling up a minivan, it's costing you around $13 extra just in the carbon tax every time you fill up. Pickup truck, you're clocking in at around $20-ish extra. Again, that's just in the carbon tax, not including the cost of the fuel or the other taxes like the GST. If you're a big rig truck driver, wow, now you're around $200 extra in the carbon tax on the diesel you're using to fill up your tanks. So when you start seeing this kind of layering effect, things start getting pretty expensive, right? Well, wait, there's more. Of course, farmers have to currently pay the carbon tax to dry their grain and heat their barns. Yeah, on stuff like natural gas and propane, farmers pay carbon tax on that. So that's a really big deal. And then you're getting into stuff like during the winter months, heating your home. So the average Alberta household will be out around $400 just in the carbon tax this coming winter to heat their home with natural gas. So that's all pretty grim and pretty expensive. Now, the good news is... Someday, the federal carbon tax might be gone. Poof. Thank you. Finally scrapped. But what happens then? Like, what happens here in Alberta? Could we see an Alberta provincial carbon tax come back here? It's happened before. Former NDP Premier of Alberta Rachel Notley imposed a provincial carbon tax on Albertans, costing us around a billion dollars before it was scrapped. So what is to prevent an Alberta carbon tax from happening here again. Right now, we don't have a shield against a carbon tax happening here again in our Taxpayer Protection Act. Um, it protects us from things like uh, increasing taxes, current taxes. It prevents things like a PST from happening. But there's no specific shield against a provincial carbon tax happening here in Alberta in the Taxpayer Protection Act. So this is why it's super important to pay attention to the Alberta NDP leadership race. Yes, I said that correctly. Right now, the Alberta NDP is holding a leadership race. And so far, one candidate has said, and I'm paraphrasing, I think, uh, the consumer carbon tax is dead. Like, that's a non-starter, meaning that one won't happen here if she becomes premier. That was candidate Sarah Hoffman. Now, as far as I've been able to read and see and listen to, it doesn't look like the other candidates have been crystal clear about what they think about a provincial Alberta carbon tax. So this is our homework. Folks who are getting phone calls from the Alberta NDP, ask them, what's your stance on a provincial made in Alberta carbon tax? Yes or no, for or against? Same thing goes for reporters who are scrumming leadership candidates, in particular, former Calgary Mayor Nahid Nenshi. We want to know, is Nahid Nenshi in favor of an Alberta carbon tax happening here, provincially? Yes or no, for or against? This is important, folks, because it costs people an awful lot of money. It punishes people without actually helping the environment because, of course, Emissions keep on going up in jurisdictions that already have carbon taxes in them anyway. So again, it's all this financial pain without environmental gain. So this is why you've seen this huge pushback, this protest to axe the tax, to scrap the carbon tax. Fun fact, and in case you're getting disheartened with me going on and on about the Alberta NDP possibly opposing a carbon tax, this has happened before. Yes, BC NDP leader Carol James, back in the day, in 2009, when she was campaigning against the BC Liberals, guess what? It was the BC NDP that first used the term axe the tax against a carbon tax. I'm not kidding. Go look it up. It was in the 2009 provincial election in British Columbia. In fact, we have tape here that we're going to show you of former NDP Premier John Horgan back in the day when he was in the opposition benches in Victoria, railing against the carbon tax. So in this clip, he's opposing increasing the provincial carbon tax because it will cost people too much to heat their homes and drive to work. Listen to this. And tell, tell people back in my constituency to get a pair of running shoes, buy some compact fluorescents, and get some weather stripping. 
Well, when the carbon tax kicks in, what, three years from now, it'll be seven cents a liter. What do you think, Honorable Speaker, the cost of uh, home heating fuel is going to be at that time? How are people in northern parts of British Columbia, people in, uh, on the wild west coast where the winds blow and the, uh, and the uh, temperatures drop, what's the cost going to be to those people? Are they going to be able to catch a bus to, to come to uh, Victoria to buy some weather stripping? No, they're not. They're going to have to get in their car and pay for that as well. Isn't that interesting? Funny how politics changes over time, right? So this is where it's really important for us to get a clear answer out of the NDP leadership candidates here in Alberta. Yes or no, are they in favor of an Alberta provincial carbon tax? Folks, that's how we're helping you fight for taxpayers.